This is a cantilever beam which is built in at one end and carrying a concentrated force at the free end. The realistic response to this load is shown here. You can also achieve these two solutions in your analysis, which are completely wrong. This beam is too stiff. It suffers from shear locking, which happens for models under bending loads using linear, fully integrated elements. This beam is too flexible. It suffers from hourglassing, which is also a problem when using linear reduced integration elements. Let's see what are these terms. Full integration, reduced integration, shear locking, and hourglassing. The integration in FEM is almost performed numerically. Numerical integration is typically performed using Gaussian quadrature rules, which are based on Gaussian weights and points. Based on the number of integration points considered for an element, we have two kinds of integrating in FEM. Full integration and reduced integration. Let's see what are these two different kinds of integration. The expression full integration refers to the number of Gauss points required to integrate the polynomial terms in an element's stiffness matrix exactly. You can see the locations of the integration points in fully integrated two-dimensional quadrilateral elements. In linear elements, there are two integration points in each direction and in quadratic elements, there are three integration points in each direction. Now, let us ask you a question. What are the number of integration points for a C3D8 element you see here? You're correct. Two integration points in each direction, which will be eight integration points in total. Reduced integration elements use one fewer integration points in each direction than the fully integrated elements. You can see the locations of the integration points for reduced integration, quadrilateral elements. Only quadrilateral and hexahedral elements can use a reduced integration scheme. In the linear elements, there is only a single integration point located at the element's centroid. and in quadratic elements, there would be two integration points in each direction. So, what is the difference between these integration schemes and how do they affect our analyses? In order to investigate the effect of order of the element, an integration type on FEM is an example will be demonstrated here. The beam is 150 millimeters long, 2.5 millimeters wide, and 5 millimeters deep, built in at one end and carrying a tip load of 5 newtons at the free end. And the material has a Young's modulus of 70 gigapascals and a Poisson's ratio of zero. Using beam theory for P equals 5 newtons at the free end, the tip deflection is 3.09 millimeters, which is calculated here. Several different meshes were used in Abacus simulations of the cantilever beam problem, as shown in figure. The simulations use either linear or quadratic, fully integrated or reduced integration elements, and illustrate the effects of both the order of the element, first versus second, and the mesh density on the accuracy of the results. The ratios of the tip displacements for the various simulations to the beam theory value of 3.09 millimeters are shown in the table. The linear element C3D8 
underpredicts the deflection so badly that the results are unusable. The results are least accurate with coarse meshes, but even a fine mesh still predicts a tip displacement that is only 56% of the theoretical value. This is caused by shear locking, which is a problem with all fully integrated first order solid elements. Shear locking causes the elements to be too stiff in bending. Let's see how. Consider a small piece of material in a structure subjected to pure bending. The material will distort like this. Lines initially parallel to the horizontal axis take on constant curvature, and lines through the thickness remain straight. The angle between the horizontal and vertical lines remains at 90 degrees. The edges of a linear element are unable to curve, Therefore, if the small piece of material is modeled using a single element, it deforms like this. The upper line has increased in length, indicating that sigma 11 is tensile. The length of the lower dotted line has decreased, indicating that sigma 11 is compressive. the length of the vertical dotted lines has not changed. Therefore, sigma 22 at all integration points is zero. All this is consistent with the expected state of stress of a small piece of material subjected to pure bending. At each integration point, the angle between the vertical and horizontal lines, which was initially 90 degrees, has changed. This indicates that the shear stress, sigma 1, 2, at these points is non-zero. This is incorrect. The shear stress in a piece of material under pure bending is zero. This spurious shear stress arises because the edges of the element are unable to curve. Its presence means that strain energy is creating shearing deformation rather than the intended bending deformation. So the overall deflections are less, which means the element is too stiff. More tips about shear locking at the final section of this video. The results from the simulations of cantilever beam using reduced integration are presented in the table. Linear reduced integration elements tend to be too flexible because they suffer from their own numerical problem, which is hourglassing. Consider a single reduced integration element modeling a small piece of material subjected to pure bending as shown here. Neither of the dotted visualization lines have changed in length, and the angle between them is also unchanged which means all components of stress at the element's single integration point are zero. This bending mode of deformation is thus a zero energy mode because no strain energy is generated by this element distortion. The element is unable to resist this type of deformation since it has no stiffness in this mode. In coarse meshes, this zero energy mode can propagate through the mesh, producing meaningless results. This phenomenon is called hourglassing. If you consider another element below this element, which has experienced hourglassing, it is obvious why it is called by this name. Now it is time to conclude what we learned in this video. Shear locking only affects the performance of fully integrated linear elements subjected to bending loads. These elements function perfectly well 
under direct or shear loads. Fully integrated, linear elements should be used only when you are fairly certain that the loads will produce minimal bending in your model. Use a different element type if you have doubts about the type of deformation the loading will create. Shear locking is not a problem for quadratic elements since their edges are able to curve. These elements will also exhibit some locking if they are distorted or if the bending stress has a gradient. Thus, you should check the results carefully if they are used exclusively in your model. In Abacus, a small amount of artificial hourglass stiffness is introduced in reduced integration elements to limit the propagation of hourglass modes. This stiffness is more effective at limiting the hourglass modes when more elements are used in the model, which means that linear reduced integration elements can give acceptable results as long as a reasonably fine mesh is used. The results suggest that at least four linear reduced integration should be used through the thickness when modeling any structures carrying bending loads with this type of element. Linear, reduced integration elements are very tolerant of distortion. Therefore, use a fine mesh of these elements in any simulation where the distortion levels may be very high. Quadratic, reduced integration elements are not susceptible to locking even when subjected to complicated states of stress. Therefore, these elements are generally the best choice for most general stress displacement simulations, except in large displacement simulations, involving very large strains and in some types of contact analyses. And this is the end of this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed. Your comments are well accepted to improve our tutorials. Wish you the best.